Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's featured review, we'll be going through the unboxing, initial review and assessment, benchmarking and disassembly for the brand new MSI GE66 Raider. For those of you not familiar with MSI's product line, the GE66 Raider is one of their high-end gaming laptop models and it's a re-released model, so it's not a brand new design, but rather an upgraded version of a former design. The most notable upgrades in this newest version is going to be the Intel i9, which is the 12900HK, and also the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti for the GPU. The system as a whole is actually rather fully loaded, as you'll see as we go through the review with our disk space, our system RAM, and even our screen all being top notch. So this is sure to be one of the best laptops out there right now if you're looking for the maximum performance available in a portable form factor. So moving right along into the review and our first step of the unboxing, you can see that everything comes double boxed for protection and it doesn't come in a flashy showcase box, but rather just more of a plain cardboard box. Our laptop was right in front and center it has a plastic cover over it to prevent it from water damage and help it from getting scratched. And it has large foam chunks around the corners so it can't get squished or have any shock damage. And just underneath of the laptop, we have another bag that has our product booklets. And we have one more separate compartment on the left hand side. And this box is going to contain our power adapter. The power adapter will be split into two pieces, the actual brick mechanism and a power cable for it. The cable will be different depending on your region and it will be set up so that it works with your native power outlets. And it is a fairly beefy power supply as necessary for such a beefy laptop. You can see it's using a non-standard power connector and we'll give you a close up to look at the wattage. When we zoom in to take a look at the specs, you can see the output is 20 volts at 18 amps for a grand total of 280 watts of output. As part of our review metrics, we know that the size and weight of a laptop is very important. So we have our laptop on the scale at five pounds and six ounces. And once you throw the power adapter in as a combined weight of seven pounds and 11 ounces, so we're just under eight pounds in total for carry weight. Moving on into the next segment of the review, we're getting into the power on state now. So just past post, we moved into the BIOS so we can show you a quick look at the configuration of the system and some of the options available to you in the BIOS. So we have our standard stuff like hyper threading and virtualization. We can change our boot order. We can set a BIOS password. We have secure boot and of course all the necessary things here to incorporate Windows 11, which is the default installed operating system on this model. Leaving the BIOS and now booting into the operating system, let's take a first look at our system in depth. Our screen has fairly thin bezels from edge to edge, and at the very top center, we have a built-in integrated HD webcam and microphone for communication. Moving down below the screen to the right-hand side, we see the badge that advertises some of the features of the laptop. The phase change liquid metal pad is an interesting one. It's a new thermal interface material for the CPU, and we'll see how well that works when we get into our benchmarking. Our Steel Series keyboard is a low profile chiclet style keyboard, and we have a very large oversized touchpad in the center with the integrated left and right clicks. Now let's take a quick tour of the outside perimeter and look at our interfaces for connectivity. On the left hand side, we have our Kensington lock port, a USB 3.2 type A port, a USB type C mini display port, and a 3.5 millimeter combo jack for your headset. On the rear side of the laptop, we have the mini display port type connection, a USB type C Thunderbolt connection, our RJ45 for networking, a standard full size HDMI output, and one more USB 3.2 type A connector. And lastly, on the right hand side, we have two more USB 3.2 type A connectors and a SD card reader. 
Let's take one last look at the outside of the laptop as far as cosmetics, how it looks when it's closed, how it fit into a bag, before we move inside of the system and take a look at the specs and our benchmarks. Now moving into the Windows Device Manager so we can look at the hardware we mentioned earlier. The NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti, one of the most high-end video cards out there, with Intel offering up the i9-12900HK, which is a very high-end CPU. We have Killer taking care of the wired and wireless networking, 32 gigabytes of system RAM, and we have M2 SSDs for our storage. As far as our monitor, here is the ID for that panel if you'd like to look it up. It's pretty obvious the GE66 Raider is targeted for gamers, but we do have a laptop that's suitable for high-end productivity tasks as well. The resolution is 4K, that's gonna give you lots of real estate, but a lot of gamers are also very concerned with refresh rates, and we do have a full 120 hertz refresh rate on that 4K panel. Here's a quick look at the CPU-Z information for the brand new 12th generation Core i9-12900HK, a 14 core CPU. And also the information from GPU-Z for the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti. As we are about to move into the performance benchmark section of the review, it's important to take a look at our temperatures while the system is not under load. The CPU can vary quite a bit depending on the core. Most of the cores are in low 50 degrees Celsius, but we have seen spikes as high as 92 degrees Celsius on one of the cores. As we get down a little bit farther, we'll get to the GPU, and it also has more than one temperature sensor as well, so the readings depend on which one you're looking at. In this case, currently the NVIDIA RTX 3080 has a 51.8 degrees Celsius reading maximum on the GPU and the hotspot reads at 60.8 degrees Celsius. Now for the numbers that are going to matter the most for a lot of people are performance scores. Firestrike came in at 25,002 for this laptop, which is one of the highest scores we've ever seen. CPU temperatures again vary quite a bit, some cores only reaching 83 degrees Celsius and some going up as high as 100 degrees Celsius. The GPU actually did a lot better as far as temperatures go. Our highest temperature on the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti was only 67.4 degrees Celsius. While we're still on the subject of temperatures, let's take a look at the system as a whole using a thermal camera. Here you can see how the heat dissipates out of the system. And it's really good to see that where your hands are going to be, there's not really much heat there, so you won't get sweaty palms. And that's not fun for anybody. The intake and exhaust ports are the hot spots, which is exactly what we want to see. That means the system is doing its job cooling. Our next performance benchmark is going to be Cinebench R23. And we'll go ahead and get that kicked off now and come back with our scores shortly. All right, our final results here, we've got a score of 11,966 on our multi-core CPU score. Down below, looking at the charts, it's interesting that where we ended up in our charts, we're actually along with all the desktop CPUs and not any of the mobile CPUs. And we move along into our final portion of our detailed review today, which is going to be our system disassembly. There are several screws to remove along the perimeter of the laptop, but they are all the same length, so that makes it easier not to put them back in the wrong order. Once we remove those screws, we can take the bottom panel of the laptop off. You can see right here, there's quite a bit of ventilation in the bottom lid to help get that intake for the fans where we have two cooling fans, one on the left and right sides. The system battery is as large as possible at 99.99 watt hours, but keep in mind this is a high demand system, so it could use the battery fairly quickly depending on what you're using it for. Next thing we'll do is uncover some of our system components. Here in the center behind this protective cover is our system RAM.
And once we remove that cover, we'll find underneath two Samsung brand 16 gigabyte memory modules. So these are nice high-end memory modules giving you 32 gigabytes of total system memory factory. The next components we'll take a look at are just over to the left. Right underneath of these heat shields, we're going to find the M2 form factor SSDs responsible for our system storage. So we have a one terabyte disk currently installed and an empty slot to install a second of your choice. From here, we're going to initiate a teardown of the system so that we can get the cooler mechanism removed and let us view the CPU and GPU. One of the nice things we see here is that thermal paste is being used in all the spaces that normally thermal pads would be used. This is an upgrade to the type of material used. Also, we can see what the metal pad looks like that was used for the CPU. As a whole, it looks like the system was well put together and the thermal interface material was well applied, so there's not a whole lot of reason to come in and redo it. But as we saw, with such high-end components in such a small space, the heat can still get up there especially on our CPU. Just take a mental note that if you did want to come and change it, that the thermal material, the liquid metal, is going to be notoriously difficult to remove because it goes into a solid when it's cold and then it melts back into a liquid as it heats up. So with the end of the disassembly also comes the end of our review today. We'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch and let you know that we have more information available for you. If you check out the video description, you'll find the product page link and there you'll find all of the full specifications, current pricing and availability. Also, don't forget as your laptop service provider, Gentech PC is always available by phone or email to help you with one-on-one -on -one personalized questions or to just get you guided in the right direction. So always feel free to contact us if you need anything of course, we look forward to your comments down in the video below, and we would love to help you out there as well. Thank you once again for watching, and we just want to remind you, this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.